Tablighi e Jamaat A House Divided Part 4 Genesis of the TJ Do the TJs hold the Fazail A'mal above the Quran? In Part 4, I'd like to talk about the genesis of the TJ and I quote this again from Professor Peary I'll read and I'll annotate there are many texts that examine the genesis of the TJ and its founder, Muhammad Ilyas. One researcher called Huck wrote in 1972 that in April 1926, Muhammad Ilyas, whilst on Hajj, felt that he'd been divinely ordered to undertake a lifetime's work of preaching. Sikand, another researcher, writing in 2010, actually quoted what happened. He said that Muhammad Ilyas had spent three days in the mosque of the Prophet and Ilyas saw the Prophet Muhammad in a dream who addressed him directly saying, O oh Ilyas, go back to India where God shall take work from you. So the TJ narrative focuses upon this divine inspiration. This is something that is not unusual for Islamic revivers and people who want to revivify Islam. A very famous Orientalist called Anne-Marie Schimmel, writing in 1991, said that many scholars who had come from outside of the two holy sites, Mecca and Medina, and stayed for periods of time in those two areas, often returned home to inaugurate a radical reform movement. So what the TJs claim and the leader of the TJs claimed is not, not something that's unusual for Islamic revivalists. On his return from Hajj and on his return from this uh, epiphany that he had received, uh, Ilyas observed that the Muslims in India were devoid of any religious fervor and uh, they, he saw that they were lacking in their adherence to the religion and knowledge of the religion. Next, we come to a book that really is the cornerstone of TJ ideology. And it's a very problematic book. It has many editions. It has abridgments. It is available in the English language and in the Urdu language. Um, and if a person was to visit any of the 700 plus mosques in the United Kingdom, and I'm sure around the world, they would very easily be able to find a copy of the Fazail A'mal. Dr. Peary says every member of the group is required to consult and study some say daily, some say on a daily basis, the Faza'il A'mal. What is the Faza'il A'mal? It is a compilation of texts and it's written by an intellectual heavyweight called Muhammad Zakaria. So the founder is Muhammad Ilyas and the main ideologue is a man called Muhammad Zakaria. This book contains stories of companions of the Prophet. Uh, commentaries and meta-commentaries on the Qur'an, as well as hadith. There is a chapter, uh, a manual that contains a chapter called Ihtishamul Kandahlawi, a Muslim Degeneration and Its Only Remedy, and uh, a sort of commentary by another TJ scholar called Molana Ishaq Ilahi. Um, this is basically a commentary upon uh, the Six Fundamentals, which was the book written by um, Muhammad Ilyas. So Muhammad Ilyas is the founder, and people like Mulana Ishaq Ilahi are dedicated followers, and people like Muhammad Zakaria are the intellectual heavyweights of this movement. What the problem is with the Faza' al-A'mal is it has very many weak, fabricated, uh, and fallacious narrations. So in the footnote uh, on page 117, uh, Dr. Peary states 
the TJs are so focused on this text as a guide to their everyday actions that its critics have accused the movement of raising it above the Quran. That's Peary's analysis. These, the TJs take the Faza'il A'mal above the Quran. And in fact, it's not uncommon to have a TJ teacher stroke guide stroke elder when he is questioned should a person try to study, read, understand, um, discuss, debate the Qur'an, they would refuse and they'd actually prohibit that. But if they were asked, if they were to read, study, discuss, debate the Faza'il A'mal, they would open the doors and that would be something that would be perfectly acceptable. So they clearly have a preference for this book. The critics of the TJ needed to have a response because the TJs were always being criticized for this. Why do you put the Faza'il A'mal above the Qur'an? So one senior Diobandi scholar stated, and it's in the footnote, it will be on the screen, it is a total misconception, this is what he said, it is a total misconception that Faza'il A'mal is the guidebook of TJ. This book only consists of the virtues of good deeds. The concept of TJ was not derived from this book, nor is the Jamaat dependent on this book to do the work of tabligh. They thought it necessary to stipulate such a book that would encourage people towards good deeds. And this book served the purpose. Therefore, the people who join this work are advised to stipulate a specific time for the reading of this book. However, it is not compulsory upon each and every person who joins this effort to read this book. You can read that how you want, but to me there's a, a tension in those words. On the one hand, he's saying this book is not important, and then he's saying you should stipulate a specific time for reading this book. The language suggests to me that he's trying to distance himself from this book, that the action and the cult-like behavior displayed by those in Dewsbury clearly shows that the Fazal Amal is a very important book for them. Another thing about the Genesis and also the founders of Jamaat Tabligh is a very important person called uh, Molana Ashraf Ali Thanavi. Uh, Thanavi was a scholar at the time and the difference really between the objectives of the TJs between Ilyas and Thanavi was that Ilyas dismissed the perception that Tabligh is solely for the ulama and educated Muslims. And secondly, he stressed the importance of the physical movement in small groups or jamaats. And that was by the scholar writing in 2000, uh, Masood. So Thanavi, he and Ilyas differed on those two points. Number one, Ilyas uh, believed that tabligh was for everyone. Every person could go out and do tabligh and you should have jamaats specifically for that. So he was the one that differed with Thanavi in those two respects. Thanavi himself is very, very problematic. The words, the works available from this man who is writing in Urdu, the works available for him, uh, of him in English are very abhorrent to the modern ear. And in fact, it's abhorrent to Muslims as well as non-Muslims. I'll give you on the screen an example of how he debases the Quran. So this is a screenshot of taking a verse of the Quran, writing it on a stone and then burying it between two graves. Let's look at the logistics here. The Quran is something that should be respected and placed in a high place, whereas the space between two graves is where people would commonly walk. Muslims are not allowed to sit on or pray towards graves. So you wouldn't walk on a grave or sit on a grave. Where you would walk is between the graves. And Thanavi, in this text here, is recommended that you recommending that you bury a place where people would stand. This is a debasement of the Quran. So do the TJs raise the Quran or do they raise the Faza'il A'mal? It seems here that they focus more on the Faza'il A'mal and scholars like Thanavi at least debase the Quran. Stay tuned for part five.